Okay, in this video, I want to show you light doing this thing it does when it comes out of the light source. It starts making these orbs that move into and out of one another. And I show quite a lot of that in, in this video, showing you how it, how it does. And I can make that go right back into the light at any stage of it's moving around like that. And uh, when it gets out a little further, of course, it gets very round, but it doesn't stay round. These orbs are so flexible. They're like contortionists. They can lengthen their self out like a ribbon, or they can fan out like a fan. They can do so many things. They can twist in the middle, and they can give, be very erratic looking, and they can take on so many colors. But you will see the orbs do all of that because in this documentary I'm making, I'm going to show you all the phases that I have caught and some new things that are just recent. But this one is important because it shows the activity of the light once it emerges from the light source. I'll be quite a little while until, it, until just a little later. Then I have something I want to talk about. In the background are my little chicks. Had some more that hatched out, so they're in my room. And I need to shut them up. Quiet, quiet. Stop that. Go to sleep. Oh, I just made them worse. Okay. And today I have another little bird. And it's a blackbird baby that fell out of its nest. And I've been feeding it been feeding it crickets and mealyworms. I'm going to spend a fortune on mealyworms. If it lives, I hope it does, I'd like to have a little blackbird that was friendly. Okay, now you can see how this light, I, when I take the camera and go up and down with the camera around the light, then I get this activity because this activity is strictly because of the viewer viewing it in this manner. See how it goes from one to the other? It's like, like, I mean, it's like light were having sex. It looks that way to me. The way one enters the other and then enters back into the other, back and forth like that. But now, if light is sexual, sex has gotten a bum rap from the church especially. And I wanted to talk about that just a little bit, how the Lord God of the Old Testament hated sex because some of the other gods that were like him mated with uh, the women, according to the scripture. And uh, he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So there were other gods but and some of them wanted uh, human sacrifice but the Lord God was no different he wanted human sacrifice too one time he asked for so many virgins to be given to him in tribute but then when you consider that he went he, he had the people go into the uh, cities and kill everyone everything that breathes and all the animals too that was a big bloodbath. That was like blood sacrifice of all the people that worshipped in a way that God didn't like. And that's kind of like what ISIS is doing now. They want to kill people who don't believe like them. But one thing ISIS is doing it that that Lord God didn't do was ISIS gives people a chance. Some of them, I guess he has given the chance to change their religion to theirs. But in the Bible, they didn't give the people any chance to be converted. They just said, slaughter them all. 
and that boy did they. And of course, all of this that was done could be allegory, could be something that never really happened literally, but most people believe it literally. So it's really them I'm talking to because if they believe that literally is true of their God that they worship now, what a horrendous thing. What a horrendous thing just to go and kill people that were just living peacefully and you come near their city, you and your group, and you don't like how they worship, so go kill them all. But I think it was because God hated those other gods having, having children with uh, some of the human women. And what if that God just hated sex? I mean, he had all his men that, Israelite men had to be circumcised. And I think that lessens sexual pleasure for the man when they're circumcised. He also had a lot of bad rules about like, if a woman wasn't a virgin on her wedding night, she was to be stoned to death the next morning. And there was another one also about if a child was born out of wedlock, that child could not enter into the temple, nor the next ten generations of children to follow that one. For ten generations, none of them could go into the temple, or you might say the church. That seems very, very silly and cruel and stupid. But such was that Lord God. That's why I don't call myself a Christian, because they believe in the Bible, God as the Creator. I don't see it. I just can't see it. I do believe there's a God, and I sort of believe in Jesus too, because I like what Jesus represented, to me at least, He represented love your enemy, and, uh, and not to uh, live by the sword, or if you do, you're going to die by the sword. He made that real plain. And he was always encouraging the people to forgive and to be generous and loving to others. So I like all of that about Jesus. And whether he really existed or not doesn't matter because in my mind, he exists as an example, a good example. And I just really wish Christians would follow after his example and not after the example of the Lord God of the Old Testament. Because it seems that in these days that we're living in now, a lot of fundamentalist Christians are getting up in arms thinking, oh, Armageddon is upon us and it's, we're going to get punished because we're not doing anything about all these sins that these people who are homosexuals or transgender or whatever, we're not doing anything about it and God's mad at us. So we, we're going to have to make some laws about they They want to have intrusive government. But I think in they're losing their popularity because so many people are for laws that will give homosexuals equal rights and I'm one of them. And I just don't see that we could call sexual things such horrible sin and, and yet condone having slaves or killing other people, murdering them, stealing all they have, taking their children away from them, all that sort of thing. I just don't understand that, how people could believe that that was good. But some people will believe that anything that the Lord God did, no matter how horrible, if He wanted it, we don't have to understand why. We just have to accept it. I don't think that way. I don't accept it and I cannot love that Bible God. But I do I do feel like I'm spiritual because I have a feeling that I connect with uh, all that is in some ways. And I I love Jesus. What I think of Jesus is is very loving. Look at all these this light how it just kind of looks like uh, what they call, trying to think of the name of it, fractals. 
It just makes fractals of itself. And there I'm going back and I was showing you that I'm using a glass candlestick holder, which I lost. I lost that one and haven't been able to find one like that ever since. It has five bulbs to it. And every time I find one, it's got eight or 12 or something like that. I'm looking for the one with five. Because I got the best orb pictures from that glass candlestick. And I think I carried it with me somewhere and left it somewhere and lost it because I've looked all over my house for it and I can't find it. But I think what we need to understand, more than trying to understand some book of old, we need to understand light. We need to study it. We need to uh, meditate upon it. I'm, my next video in this documentary is going to show you a, a new character that just just recently has uh, appeared. And it's kind of exciting because I'm seeing it both in with my camera and with the, the naked eye. There's always something new. It's like, now, like what the light is doing now. I can't just film that anytime I want to because it doesn't always let me see it doing this. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's many a time I thought, I'm going to make another video and get the light doing this little thing and talk while I'm doing it. It's really hard for me to talk while I'm filming. It's like, I'm filming so late at night that if I'm talking, I might disturb the other people in the house, so I just tend to not talk. But um, then when I film it from my computer screen, I get those annoying Newton rings. I don't see them so bad tonight, though, so maybe they're not going to bother this one so bad. This won't be a very long video. I'm going to make this a short one and just show you the action of the light and the fractal nature of it. And I said my little saying about what I think about sex. I think it's a per perfectly healthy thing and people who live sexless lives don't have good ideas because sex is procreative of ideal as well as bodies. I read that in uh, Walter Russell's book. I mean, people that don't have sex are usually hard-nosed, kind of cruel, and not real easy to be around kind of people. This light is so beautiful. Every day I look at it and I, and I think, I know I'm seeing into another plane of existence that is invisible, but right here around us, surrounding us all, at all times, and that perhaps this world of light is coming into view now because now things are getting to where the veil is being lifted and we're seeing more and more. I look around on the internet and I find all kinds of people filming orbs and a different kind than I get. They get orbs in the sky, just hundreds and thousands of them, and they get these orbs that float around in their houses. They look like so many bubbles floating around, only they're, they're not bubbles, they're actual orbs. And uh, I have a friend that her father died. And she and her husband and her son were at, going to get their picture made at some event they were at. And she wanted her father in the picture, so she asked him if he would pose for her, even though he's on the other side. And guess what? Right where he, he would have stood with his head behind hers, there was a big old blue orb when they took the picture. So he did join them. But when we're out of body, it might be that we are able to travel about in an orb-like body. 
Anyway, they were they were convinced that was him. There's many people that say that we are an orb anyway and that that orb is located in our throat. But I don't know. I don't know about that, but it could be. Every time I hear something, I just file it away and I don't you don't have to believe anything. Don't believe anything because I say it or anybody does. Just store it away as information. And when you have other information that seems to go with it, pull it down and look at it again. That's what I do. I think that's the best way to be. Because it's alright to not have an opinion. It's perfectly alright. It's probably the best way to be. Because otherwise, you might be dogmatic and so opinionated that you can't open up to new ideas. And when you meet someone like that, it's best just to leave them be because um, it's almost impossible to get them to think outside the box. Sometimes the colors in these orbs are so fluorescent. Well, I'm going to end this one now. And uh, my next video, I will be showing you a new kind of little thing that is in the light. And I've never seen it before, but now it's here. <laughs> so that will be exciting. And this is the Dove Lady. I'm going to end this now. Over and out for now.